You're listening to Black History Unveiled with me, Amat Levine, the podcast where we spotlight pivotal moments, influential figures, and groundbreaking movements from Black history, from the continent to the diaspora. As we've started this first season, it's apt to shed light on the show's structure. The idea is that one week I'll put out a longer main episode, and the following week that episode is followed by a minisode, where I might answer questions you've sent in or delve deeper into something connected to the main episode. Oh, and as this episode covers current events, it's probably a good idea to mention that I'm recording this in late October 2023. So keep that in mind if you're listening afterward. This story will have plenty of developments. Another coup in Burkina Faso. On Friday, residents woke to the sound of gunfire. Soldiers took positions on the capital's main artery, blocking access to the presidential palace, where heavy gunfire could be heard. Hours later, soldiers from Burkina Faso's special forces, led by young Captain Ibrahim Traore, appeared on national television, announcing their military takeover in what appears to be a coup within a coup. Our common ideal was betrayed by our leader, Lieutenant Colonel Paul Henry Damiba, in whom we had placed all our trust. Indeed, the deterioration of the security situation, which justified our action, has been relegated to the background in favor of unfortunate political adventures. You just heard part of Al Jazeera's reporting on the latest military coup in Burkina Faso. In last week's main episode, I promised to tell you more about it. Military coups and armed jihadist militias have become common across the Sahel, so the coups in Burkina Faso must be understood in that context. I mentioned it in the episode, but I'll remind you of what the Sahel Belt is. The Sahel is a region stretching from Senegal in the west. Then it goes east through parts of Mauritania, Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger, Nigeria, Chad, and Sudan. This large swath represents a transitional zone where the Sahara morphs from arid desert to savanna and grasslands. It is a region that has historically been home to some of Africa's largest and most important kingdoms, but today it is a place affected by several different problems. It is, for example, a region susceptible to climate change. Residing in Sweden, as I am, some might welcome delayed snowfall accompanied by milder winters. But in the Sahel, a few degrees here or there can be the difference between life and death. It is also a region that has seen an explosion of violence in the last five to ten years. Some human rights organizations have called the Sahel the new epicenter of terrorism. Data suggests a tenfold surge in fatalities stemming from Islamist aggression since 2007. As per the Australian Institute for Economics and Peace's Global Terrorism Index, the Sahel now accounts for 43% of all terrorism-linked fatalities. Contrast this to 2007, when the figure was a mere 1%, marking a substantial escalation. In 2022 alone, Burkina Faso bore witness to 1,135 terror-associated deaths, the highest in the world. There's a medley of elements behind the development. Several of these countries, such as Niger, Mali, and Chad, are among the world's poorest and have been affected for years by unstable leadership and weak economies. This casts a long shadow on future prospects for the predominantly youthful populace. Mass unemployment reigns. At the same time, a substantial portion of the population relies on agriculture or livestock raising, endeavors made increasingly arduous by the onset of climate change and desertification. Dispute over scant resources and the progressively infertile terrain have ensued. All of this creates a breeding ground for conflict, 
and creates lots of potential recruits for militia groups. As a result, many armed groups have appeared or grown all over the Sahel Belt in the last 10 years. Some are motivated by a quest to carve out advancements for their ethnic groups. In contrast, others operate as criminal syndicates engaged in narcotics trafficking, arms dealing, or human smuggling. A third category comprises Muslim extremists who wage war against their governments on religious grounds, a kind of jihad in their opinion. Some have stated or unstated links to terrorist groups, such as the Islamic State or Boko Haram. Sometimes the line between these types of groups is thin indeed. In 2012, a civil war broke out in Mali, one of Burkina Faso's neighboring countries, when members of Mali's Tuareg ethnic group began an armed separatist struggle. The fall of Libyan dictator Muammar al-Gaddafi and the subsequent civil war in that country created tidal waves and many weapons and militia groups spread over a gigantic area. The rebels captured large parts of northern Mali and looked set to continue. Mali sought help from France, the former colonial power, to secure the country. Although Mali and France managed to put down the Tuareg rebellion, the threat was far from over. Since then, Mali has suffered several coups. At the same time, the relationship with France has deteriorated. The French believe that the latest military junta behaved unacceptably in the way it seized power and also in how it started cooperating with the Russian private military company Wagner Group a group that has become notorious for its human rights abuses. During its time in Mali, the Wagner Group has already been accused of committing massacres of civilians, something the military junta denies. At the same time, there were those in Mali who were dissatisfied with France's involvement in the war against the jihadists and believed that France's long presence in the country was no better than a neo-colonial occupation. In early 2022, the military junta demanded that the French troops leave the country, something France agreed to do in August of that year. In November of the same year, France announced that aid to Mali would end as long as the country relied on Russian mercenaries. For its part, Mali ordered all French NGOs to cease their activities in the country. While the relationship between Mali and France has gotten worse, the violence has continued. And since Mali is a neighbor of Burkina Faso, the conflict has in some ways spilled over. Several militia groups are active along the border between the two countries. We talked about them a lot in last week's main episode, but a reminder... Blaise Compaure was the man who was once Thomas Sankara's close friend and right-hand man, but who betrayed and murdered him and then ruled Burkina Faso for 27 years. In 2014, widespread protests forced him into exile in Ivory Coast. Since around the same time, Burkina Faso has seen a massive increase in terror-related violence. Democratic elections were held in Burkina Faso in 2015 and 2020, both of which were won by President Kabore, but violence spread in the meantime. Attacks took place on hotels in the capital Ouagadougou and villages where civilians were shot down and buildings burned to the ground. Kidnappings have become common as well. Thousands have been killed, both civilians and soldiers, while over two million people have been forced to flee. In January 2022, a military coup took place in the country. You heard me talk about it at the end of last week's main episode. A junta took over and installed Lieutenant Colonel Paul Henri Sandaugo Damiba as the new president. He was supposedly the right man to lead the fight against the jihadists. But the spiral of violence wouldn't stop. More and more territory was lost to the rebels, and Burkina Faso's government was said to be in control of only 60% of the country. 
For example, on September 28, 2022, there were reports that 11 government soldiers had been killed in an ambush and that 50 civilians had disappeared during the attack. A mere two days later, Burkina Faso suffered another military coup, the second in a year. The scenes were similar to those during the previous coup, with gunfire and explosions in the capital. And just like during the previous one, a group of soldiers then appeared on television and read their message aloud. President Amiba had failed to quell the rebels' insurgency and was deposed. New strategies were acquired. The then 34-year-old Ibrahim Traore, born in 1988, became the new interim president. He has a background as part of a UN peacekeeping force and had recently been the head of an anti-jihadist special force. He thus became the world's youngest head of state. Damiba has since been allowed to go into exile in Togo. The enigmatic and measured Traore has made a strong impression during his little more than a year in power. In January 2023, Burkina Faso's leadership announced the end of military cooperation with France and that French troops had four weeks to leave the country. The following month, France left. Instead, Burkina Faso has moved closer to Russia and Turkey. There have been allegations that Burkina Faso, like Mali, has turned to the Wagner Group, or whatever is left of it after Yevgeny Prigozhin's death. Still, these reports have not been confirmed so far, and Burkina Faso's leadership has denied it. During the Russia-Africa summit in St. Petersburg in late July 2023, Trore made headlines with a speech criticizing other African leaders for waiting for handouts. He wondered how Africa, so rich in resources, is the world's poorest continent. He talked about the importance of finding new alliances and new ways to develop. Self-sufficiency is key, he said. France's grip on Africa was further weakened in July 2023, when yet another coup occurred in Mali and Burkina Faso's neighbor, Niger. The democratically elected Mohamed Bazoum was placed under house arrest while General Abdurrahman Chiani took over as leader of a new military junta. Niger has had four previous coups since independence from France in 1960, but has recently, here in the West, been touted as democracy's last bastion in the Sahel and a key ally of the U.S. and France. In Niger, just like in Mali and Burkina Faso, the politicians' corruption and inability to defeat the jihadists were highlighted as reasons for the coup, but also France's influence over the country's economy, like France owning the mines that extract uranium, Niger's most important resource. The West, the African Union, and ECOWAS, the Economic Community of West African States, condemned the takeover. The latter threatened military intervention to restore order. But in a countermove, the military juntas of Niger, Burkina Faso, and Mali said they would stand together against any attempt at military escalation. In September 2023, the countries took a further step they signed a formal military alliance, the so-called Alliance of Sahel States. In October, back in Burkina Faso, the country announced that it had entered an agreement with Russia on a nuclear power plant. Burkina Faso is one of the least electrified countries in the world, with just over 20% of people having access to power. And most of its electricity comes from biofuels. But with the new nuclear plant, the country hopes to achieve 95% electricity access for urban areas and 50% for rural areas by 2030. Ibrahim Traoré's ascent to power has been hard to come to terms with for many countries in the West. Here in the West, this issue is usually treated as a simple question of good and 
democracy versus evil military dictatorship. But in reality, things are almost always more complex, as we saw in last week's episode about Tumasankara. How do we, for example, handle a situation where it seems a large portion of the people supports a military dictatorship? Can we, in the name of democracy, tell them they're wrong? The support for these juntas can be explained by what we've already discussed, corruption and dissolution with the influence of former colonial powers. But there is also an aspect of Africa having an extremely young population. Some of them might relate more to the young soldiers in the army than to the democratically elected politicians who often belong to the older generations. But while a military takeover might feel like a breath of fresh air to some, we know from experience that armies in power tend to mean an increase in human rights abuses, a decrease in freedom of the press, and a slew of other negatives. That hasn't stopped some people from being quick to crown these military leaders as the second coming of Tumasankara. There are a lot of opinions about this and there seems to be an increase, either doctored or genuine, in people clamoring for closer ties with Russia, as if those were the only options, either A, staying in the fold of the old colonial power, or B, allying with another European power that has its own dreams of empire. There are, of course, more options than that. Ones that don't lean on pleasing European power blocks but rather centers on self-reliance and put Africans' interests first. That would, at least to me, seem to better embody the spirit of Tumasankara. But I'm not here to tell you what to believe. It's yet too early to say how the situation will play out. As I'm recording this, again in late October 2023, the violence continues and the humanitarian crisis worsens. Many are killed or displaced, and over 6,000 schools have been forced to close due to insecurity, leaving over one million children out of school. In late September 2023, the Junta says it thwarted yet another coup attempt. Burkina Faso's military leadership, who promised a return to democracy by mid-2024, have now said that no elections will be held until a return of security. As of now, it remains to be seen if the jihadists can be defeated, and if so, if the militaries will be willing to hand back power to the people. Thank you for listening to Black History Unveiled with me, Amat Levine. If you've listened this far and liked what you've heard, check out patreon.com slash blackhistoryunveiled to gain access to ad-free episodes, maps and pictures, bonus episodes, and more. You'll also find a comprehensive list of sources for this episode. If you don't want to become a Patreon subscriber, another way to help me is to share the podcast on social media, recommend it to someone you know, or give it a rating or a review on the podcast app you're using. I'll be back next week with another main episode. We'll be leaving Burkina Faso and moving a bit north and way back in time. I'll see you guys then. Peace. Peace.